Now, now a couple qu- couple things I'm gonna throw at you all very deep. Now we're gonna try to we're gonna go deep. We're gonna crank it up. I want you Let's all to go, bro. I want to listen to what we what what I'm gonna say to you. Okay, now the first thing is um I got a question for you. Why do you feel white people hate black people so much? Because we're kings talk- and queens. Okay, all right. I want to hear from um you okay. first, Victoria. And then we'll go for, to Mark, then we'll go to Cortez, then we'll save him for Taj. That's the first thing I'm going to ask you. What do you say, Victoria? I think that white people don't like themselves and have over time compounded a habit of blame and scapegoating. So they have never, ever been taught to look at themselves. And so they find that solution yeah. in tormenting and abusing other people, other circumstances and everything. They've never been held accountable. So... This seems like a result. Very good. Now, 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 black people, we are the most, as Cortez said, we were kings and queens brought over here from Africa. We, it was not the low scale people that were brought from Africa 400 and something years ago. It was kings and queens that were being trapped. And a, and a lot of Arabs, people don't know this, Arabs helped to be able to capture us. They, they worked in cahoots with the white people. And the white Come people- Come on, bro. They went into the western part of Africa. They didn't want to go too deep because it would have been too hard getting out. So they went to the synagogue and they went to the, um, on, the, on the coast to get a lot of Africans now. And they were kings and queens now. Um, black people are some of the most beautiful, most brilliant, profound people you can ever meet. Did you not know that, that we have the whole audience of the world with our music, with our culture, with our, with our, um, our dance? Trends are set based upon black people. Don't you get this now? Do you not know that it was because of Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan to save the NBA? Okay, the NBA oh. went down the toilet before Magic Johnson and, and Larry Bird came and saved it. Now, people spend millions of dollars, season ticket holders, not to watch white people dribble the basketball, but to see black people dribble the basketball. Now, whatever we join in, we take over. NBA, NFL, baseball. We don't, we're just not interested in hockey. But look at what Tiger Woods did to golf. Look at what he did to golf. When I was growing up as a young kid, golf was the most boring thing. Now with Tiger Woods, it's must-see TV. I want you to get this now. Now, the other thing that's very, very important is that whenever you mix one drop of black into anything, it's beautiful. If you take a white man who's with a black woman, you drop some black in her, and that baby, that baby is beautiful, all right? Now, white people, and I'm not trying to offend my audience, I'm just talking fact. Now, white people, they vie to get our lips, to get our color, to get the women's hips, to get our athleticism and our rhythm. These things they've been trying to do. So many times, if I can't be you, I'm going to hate you. That's what happens so many times. Now, let's talk about the scripture aspect of it. Many people believe that black people were cursed because Adam and Eve were the first black people. This one, is this one thing. And they feel that because Adam and Eve came from Ethiopia, they were black. You know white people in Ethiopia, it's black people, all right? Now, so because they sinned fell short, it was because of um, that sin. Now, that was one part of it. The other part of it is that Ham, Noah's youngest son, was a black man. He had a black wife and he had Ham by him. And Ham, you know, if you know the story, Ham saw his dad naked. And instead of uh, covering him up, the Bible says he told his two brothers and his two brothers went in there and covered him up. And, and when Noah found out about it, he cursed Ham, who was a black man. That's what many people think about. But the point is that we're living in a, in a, in a time like when Martin Luther King time and Willie Lynch time and um, et cetera, where trying to stop a black man is an arduous task because Unlike Mexican race, Chinese race, Philippine, or anything, we're the first nation to have a black president faster than anybody else. Can you imagine in 1776 is when is when America became an official nation with the Declaration of Independence, but yet and still, 2008, we had our first black president. I want you to get this now. We're a powerful, beautiful people. We need to realize who we are and what we are and stop selling the milk. We own the cow. Now, I'm not trying to preach, but I'm just telling you fact about being a black man. And I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be a black man. 
even though the world ain't proud to be a black man or pr proud of me. But let me tell you something very interesting. Cortez, is a, is a, is a, he works in a law firm. Uh, Mark J. Yoakum works in the post office. Taj is a, is a minister and also has a very successful non-for-profit. And then Victoria, she's a business owner. She also is, from what I found out, a wedding planner. Okay, now, and a, and a wedding photographer. Now, um, many times, as, Matt, as, as Cortez was saying, when you are very successful, that's one of the most intimidating, dangerous things you could ever be as a black man. Educated and, and well-dressed, articulate black man. What do you say about that, Mark? Um, I, I agree with that. And you asked the question of why do whites hate black so much? I think it's a number of reasons. And one of the main reasons is there's a superiority, superiority uh, uh, complexion, which, which has went back, you know, thousands of years, as you uh, talked about, you know, but definitely, even if you look at before we were brought here in 1619, you look at what happened to the Indians, you know, and how they were wiped out and how uh, Europeans came over here with many diseases. And that's what really wiped out a lot of the Indians. It wasn't uh, a lot of murders. It was more so the diseases that they brought, you know, when they came over here. But wiping out the Indians and, and then enslaving, you know, uh, Africans, bringing them over here. And, and um, you know, I, I, I think that's, you know, uh, plays a big part in it. You know, um, the superiority complex and, and them fearing us as, as strong black people. We're a very resilient people. And with everything that we've had to deal with over the past 400 years and that we're still dealing with right now, we're still here, we're still strong, and we're still fighting. And, you know, those are uh, a couple of the things that I um, definitely think of. And, and, you know, with that question that you asked. Very good, very good. Now, um, Tosh, let me, let me go to you. Now, why do you feel white people hate black people so much? Well, to, to answer the piggyback before I get to that, I know you went deep into the Bible. If those that read in the Bible, the actual first mention of something that was white or a white person and kings, and that was because of one of the person that had leprosy. No, if you follow along, that's when they first went into of anything that of color of white. That was, you know, on that. That was in the books of Kings. Um, but the key is, is an inferiority. Um, I guess the fear of the unknown. Um, BET had a show, and that was in my spirit. It was the uh, Public Enemy, but they had the wrong song. They played Fight the Enemy, but the one real song, and, and Mr. Cortez Mack, is this is all in God's plan. And one thing about it is, is I keep saying God, because if you get into God's word and, and, and every, if, if we could send the message out so people can enjoy God's word and put it in their life, God will take over. But the thing is, is knowing that it's going to be peace on earth because there's got to be that millennium that's going to come. That's, and it's close. It's going to come. Giants is going to rise up. So it's, it's going to happen. It's in God's plans. We're living to see it, but the key is, is to promote it because the key is, is and they're trying to do it. I see it praying more, but it's love. We, we, can, we, are, we got to learn to love one another. Like I, I, like I love you, Coach Tess, man. You may not disagree with me, but I'm not going to hold it to me like, oh, he don't like, no. I'm just speaking my point because I know how good God is. If we would all have conversations Pray for one another. Like I pray for Mr. Sharad, pray for you brothers and the sister that was there and, and keep it moving and resonate. It's going to happen. Miracles are supposed to happen. Things are go away and God will take care. Because if God is for, for us or for you as an individual, uh, who could be against you? And that's why it's so important because things are be happening, but you still have people that's being successful and still making it and it's not affected. It's just the key is, is we have to, you know, pray pray for the, the gangs, pray for the drug users and all them that they can hopefully find God before it's too late. 
All right, let me, let me say let me say something real quick. Now we only have a few minutes left. I really appreciate you all being a part of the show. Um, very educated. I learned so much from you all. Um, our articulate individuals. Um, preach. I guess you're preaching this Sunday because you really are riled up. So we really appreciate um, you uh, with your sermons this evening. Now, um, one thing that's very interesting, though, and I'm going to throw this and mess up everybody's head. You know, back in the '60s, the '50s, the '40s. You know, um, even before that, even if you were a preacher. Even if you were respected in a town, did you not know that the sheriff of that town can knock on your door and take your wife and have her for that night and then bring her back that evening as if it was his wife? Did you not know that? Did you not know that you had no rights? It didn't matter if you had the Bible in your hand or under the shelf. The fact is that you have to understand something very important. The Bible tells you, Ecclesiastes, he says there is a time to fight and then there's a time to, at, for peace. Sometimes you have to fight as a man and God is going to hold you to, to fight. Let me see if I can explain that to you better. The Bible tells you in Revelations chapter 21, he said all, even the cowardly is going to have their part in the lake of fire. Do you not know that there are times in your life where you have to stand up as a man? You can walk around and say, I'm so heavenly bound, but you can be so no earthly good. You have to understand that. So my point is that you were man first before you were a Christian. That don't change. You were a black man first before you were a Christian. Am I condoning violence? No, but it's sometimes in life, you, before I say this, in, 19, in 1965 all the way to about 1968, you can check your history books on this, Dr. Martin Luther King started getting, um, he was irrelevant. He was still very powerful, but his, his, his nonviolence campaign started running his course. And he began to be where it was almost a byword. But what changed it was his assassination. When his assassination happened, the white people realized that they had gone too far. And so that's when they started relaxing things. Let me give you the Chicago for an example. In 1967, 68, before Martin Luther King's murder, black people couldn't go past Halstead. They couldn't go past 55th. And they couldn't go far west at all. Or you would have a serious issue. Martin Luther King, got he got rocks thrown at him in Oak Lawn when he was leading a um, very peaceful march through Oak Lawn. But the point is that when white people realized they went too far, that's when they started relaxing where black people can go to Western, go to Evergreen Park, Evergreen Plaza, go to Ford City. They would look at you funny. You can go there because it was fresh off of what happened in 1968. Now, my point is that the peaceful marches wasn't what was cutting it. It was the fact that they had assassinated and he, he was a martyr. Martin Luther King died as a martyr. So my point is, preacher, you're so right about um, honoring God and walking with him. But if you read in your Old Testament, starting with David, David was a man that had to do a lot of killing for the Lord. And if you were looking at it from David's perspective, it'll look like David was a murderer, but he was doing it for the cause of the Lord. So we have to understand that point. Sometimes you have to just stand tall. Um, Victoria, would you like to have a man that is a, a pacifist or would you like to have a man that stands up for somebody disrespecting you? I would like to have a man who understood what God would want out of that situation. And, and what if he wants you to, him to stand up and knock that man out of his teeth out for disrespecting you? <laughs> if, if, if God told him to do it, I would expect <laughs> him to be obedient. <laughs> okay. Now... Now, now, there's a the, the point is that is as a very interesting answer. But the point is this: um, you were a woman before you were a Christian, okay? And a woman marries a man to be to be a protector and a provider. Bottom line. So that means that when you're sleeping at night, and somebody comes knocking on the door, he don't say, "Baby, God told me to tell you to answer the door." <laughs> Put his behind up and answer that door, because you married a man for a reason. Let the church say, man, you, 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 you share my yeah. sentiment, Cortez? <laughs> yeah, it, it's natural before spiritual. Thank you. My point now. Um, but the point is that I would rather go down swinging and say, Lord, please forgive me and not swinging the blow and happen to hear it from my wife and every That's the worst thing you can ever have. You ever see that movie called Crash? Beautiful movie. You saw what happened with um with um with uh, Terrence Howard, right? When a cop pulled him over and his wife, and he started following his wife, 
And right. she said, why didn't you do anything about it? And he was tormented by it because he felt he should have responded, but the man was a police officer and could have shot him. He was tormented. But you think about that, having to live with that the rest of your life.